What are you struggling with? One of you said the never ending feeling of wanting to be productive and not being able to. The idea of productivity has always been simple, not easy, like most things worth struggling for. It's easy to get caught up in the rat race of what you should be doing, how to be like others, things that aren't useful at all, and definitely will not help with your productivity. The truth is we know what to do, but we need constant reminders. Well, we don't need them, but I think what we fail to do the most is to organize our ideas around productivity so that we stop falling into the same traps over and over. I find the best technique for this to be something like a vision board or quotes that knock me into gear. I make these readily accessible by making it either the wallpaper on my phone or computer or just having sticky notes around my desk. So in this video, I'll be giving you the five biggest mistakes people make with productivity and the simple and super effective solutions for each. A few of these might be obvious, but one in particular is probably something you don't think about often. Number one, you are confusing inspiration with distraction. You watch 200 podcasts, you have a limitless amount of motivation, but you're not actually doing anything. I know the feeling, dreaming is super fun. You're on top of the world when you're fantasizing about success. Alex Hermosi gives you a simple solution for a seven-figure life, and you're just sitting there thinking and thinking and listening. Multitasking is one of the problems we'll talk about later, but listening and executing are two completely different skill sets. What I would recommend for people who like to fantasize but have trouble executing is to do both at the same time. So write down your ideal future without listening to other things. Always aim for momentum. If you're currently being inspired, you're not actually executing. So start writing that script, doing that push-up, signing up for therapy, anything that will feel like you're moving significantly towards the ideal future. It's like Stephen King says, amateurs sit and wait for inspiration, the rest of us just get to work. The best solution I found for this is temporarily turning off all social media, including podcasts and audiobooks. Probably best just to leave your phone in the other room. I started using this app called Opal or Opal. It's $9 a month, which creates an incentive to actually use it, but it turns off apps on your phone temporarily from any time period you want, and you kind of have to go through this whole song and dance to get it back. It's Great. But I actually got the benefits and stopped using it after about a week, which I'll probably talk about in a different video. It was kind of interesting. Number two, your goal is too big. This is kind of a double-edged sword because you sort of want an idealistic future to move towards, but sometimes people create these big ideals to kind of be like, well, I failed at trying to be a billionaire. That's okay. Set up reasonable goals that are also ambitious. What I would recommend is a somewhat realistic goal, maybe doing 200 push-ups in one day. Write down 200 push-ups and stash it away, and then start writing and presenting in front of you the goal that you have to achieve the next day or the next week. So start with 10 push-ups, 15 push-ups, 20 push-ups. Keep the big goal out of the way, and then every day check up on these smaller goals that will eventually lead you to that big goal. You cannot underestimate the importance of creating a system where you're constantly progressing and winning. And also sometimes the big goals aren't very clear, like saving the planet or being rich and famous and hot. Rich can range from six figures to 10 figures. Popularity can be a thousand subscribers versus a million. You need actual numbers like the ones I just used, a hundred thousand dollars in the bank account instead of being rich or 10 million, I don't know. A warning about making something like popularity and money your goal, a lot of the context of those two rely on luck. So I would write down the goals that could lead to those goals, like writing the book, starting the YouTube channel, these things that could potentially make you a lot of money. Make those the objectives so that they are actually executable. I make up words. It's like Martin Luther King says, you don't have to see the whole staircase, you just have to take the first step. Number three is multitasking. Steve Uzzle says multitasking is merely the opportunity to screw up more than one thing at a time. Multitasking when I was younger was romanticized. It was sort of the sign of intelligence. And now it's seen as irresponsible, rightly so. Have you ever had a conversation with someone on their phone and they're engaging, but there's this slight lag? It drives me insane. They're not really engaged on the phone call and they're definitely not engaged with you. It'll always be more effective doing one thing instead of three. I understand why we do this. We distract ourselves when we get bored, but unfortunately that seeps into the rest of our lives and then we start distracting ourselves in moments where we really don't need to. Turning off the noise, at least for me, can feel really strange. Sitting in a room alone is not something that my generation, I think, is used to, but that's where productivity starts. It's absolutely achievable and trainable through practice and you'll probably learn to love silence more than having noise. Multitasking is just doing multiple tasks badly. Number four 
is perfectionism. I'm so glad in 2024, perfectionism has the bad rap that it does. There's usually two cases. One, it's just a lie. Someone says they have it, but really they just don't want to start. But the other case is somebody does have perfectionism and they build a mountain of information about the topic they want to explore without actually having explored it. If you want to learn how to bake a better cake, you bake lots of cakes. You don't sit there thinking about how to bake cakes. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the parable of the pottery class, so I will keep it insanely short. A pottery class was split into two groups. One was told to make as many pots as possible. The other one was told to make the perfect pot. Guess which group made better pots? The multiple one. They created and they iterated, and unfortunately for the perfect pot, they just theorize. Experience will always outlast theory. And this is also good news out there for people who don't have a traditional education. If you're getting experience, you're learning faster. You don't need a university for education. Striving for perfectionism is a 20 ton shield that we lug around thinking it will protect us when in fact, it's the thing that's really preventing us from being seen and taking flight. That's a quote from Brene Brown. And number five is probably not an absolute necessity, but for me, it seems to be the thing that helps the most with productivity. And that is <gasps> physical health. This is universally just one of the best pieces of advice for gaining confidence, which will help you in pretty much anything that you struggle with. It also works paradoxically. If you're someone who struggles with productivity, the more that you work out, the more productive you actually become, even though you're spending more time doing something. It's that momentum. This should start with at least walks throughout the day with myself. I actually award myself when I'm illustrating or writing, I finish a page, I go for a walk. By the way, I write children's book, which speaking of, I just got a restock. We sold out, I think the first day in maybe an hour or so. So if you didn't get a chance to get the children's book, it's for all ages. It's technically a child's book, but I wrote it in a way where I think parents, adults, whatever can enjoy the heck out of it. Plus it's just got cute pictures and I think it's fun. I've been working out every day for 12 days and it has been the best momentum builder ever. As soon as I'm finished, I'm excited to win at something else. And lately it's been, it's been videos. Videos are fun again. As Carol Welch says, movement is a medicine for creating change in a person's physical, emotional, and mental states. Once you're doing one thing right, you're gonna wanna be doing everything right. And fortunately or unfortunately, this works the other way around. If your health slips or your productivity slips, it can be a snowball. But I don't want you to think that you are in this snowball effect. You should not judge yourself when you're having a couple of bad days or you're slipping. It's not about how many days in a row you think you're blowing it. It's always about just doing the right thing when you can. And ideally that right thing just grows and grows and grows. Again, all of this is a muscle. All of this is a practice. The more you do, the more you do. No matter how stormy your week is, small wins compound. So right now, if you feel like you're in a drought, just do one small thing productive towards your ambitions, towards your goals. Don't aim for something so high right now. Just try to get to that next level. And again, validate yourself when you do something good. That is something you should be proud of. Again, here are the five phrases that summarize the issues people have with productivity. Too much motivation, goal isn't clear, multitasking, perfectionism, and physical health. There's a lot we all want to do in our short lives, and we can do so much of that. Before I made YouTube videos or wrote children's book, everything felt like such a slog. The first time ever doing anything is so hard. And then by the second time, it becomes easier. The same thing with working out. Once you do it more than 10 times or hundreds of times or thousands of times even, it becomes harder not to do it than to do it. I thought about writing a book for maybe a year. And then when I sat down to do it, I finished it in 10 minutes, at least the first iteration. It's the doing that'll surprise you. A lot of times we fantasize about certain people and the things they can achieve, but those people are no different than you. They just made the simple but difficult decision to start. So hopefully this video serves as your final reminder for today to get started on either your goal setting or your goal execution. Hope this helps. Take care, progress daily, and keep killing it.